Welcome back to Getting Started with Unreal Technology. In this video, we're going to start the creation of a very simple introductory level. That's right, a very simple level. The objective of the next couple of videos is not to get you up to speed as a professional level designer. Instead, what we're looking at doing is exposing you to the experience of creating a level with Unreal Technology. That's right. Now, as we proceed through future videos, you'll get a much more in-depth explanation of each and everything we're doing. For now, just follow along so that when you get into those later videos, you'll have already been exposed to a lot of the things we'll be doing. Now let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want you to do is go under your file menu and choose new to create a new level. You'll see the new level dialog where you can choose to create an additive or subtractive level. That's right. In old Unreal technology, basically everything was subtractive, which means you start off in a world of solid mass and you go in and you subtract out pieces and that ends up forming your level. Now we have the ability to start off in a world that's completely void where we start out by adding geometry in and we create our level up from there. In this level, what we're going to do is create a geometry style of subtractive. Later on, we're going to demonstrate another level, a much more involved level, that will use a geometry style of additive. So right now, Imagine when Zach clicks OK, we are in a world of solid mass, and we will have to subtract out from that mass if we want to be able to walk around within a level. That's right. So for now, we're going to click No on Saving Changes. And well, there's nothing to save yet. The only thing that you guys can see right now in the world is just this red cube, a builder brush. This is nothing that we're going to actually see in the level. This is really just a template that we can move around and use to create stuff. That's right. Now, if for some reason you don't see the red builder brush, it might be that you need to to move around in this uh, little viewport down here in the lower left hand corner. So let's take just a second and talk about navigating this. If you drag with the left mouse button, this is kind of like driving a car. If you push the mouse forward, you move forward. If you pull the mouse back, you move back. And as you move left and right, it's kind of like turning your head to the left and to the right. So that's a way of walking through this virtual world. But what if you need it to look up and look down? Well, you can just hold down the right mouse button, and this is a lot like turning your head or turning the camera on a tripod. You can turn to the left, turn to the right, look up and look down. If you need to move, kind of like strafing through midair, you can pan the camera by holding down the left and right mouse buttons. Moving up and down will lift your camera straight up and straight down, and left and right will slide you to the left and right. Very it, nice. It will probably take you a few moments to get used to, so take a second and practice. Yeah, but once you adjust it. to it, it's very intuitive. That's right. Okay, so let's begin by creating our first room. The first thing we need to do is define the dimensions of this room, which will then be applied to our red builder brush. So if you move your mouse to the left-hand side of the screen, you're now inside the toolbox, which is a part of the user interface where you can see all the different shapes you can create. Right click on the cube button, and you're going to get the brush kilder, or brush kilder, that's, nice. <laughs> that's a very good one. Brush builder cube, as my tongue gets tied, a window where we can define the size of our red builder brush. We're going to set the x axis to 512. We'll set the y axis also to 512. And notice that I'm moving through these uh, fields by pressing the up and down arrow key. I'm not using tab like you would in most Windows applications. Once you have 512 by 512 by 256, go ahead and click Build, and then you can close this window. You'll notice that the Builder Brush adjusted in size to reflect these new settings. That's right. This red Builder Brush is here to help us define the size of geometric uh, objects we'll create. And I'd, what, I'd okay. like to point out one more thing as sure. well. Right now, before you actually subtract anything out, I just wanted to point out that you can still see the grid through the room. Since there's no lights in this level yet, when you build this first room by subtracting some mass out, What's going to happen are those blue lines are going to disappear, but it's still going to be a black void because there are no lights in there. That's right. So let's go ahead and create our first room by clicking on the CSG subtract button here in the toolbox. And boom, suddenly you can't see the grid through the walls of the room anymore, but we can't really see the room either because all of the lights are off. What I'm going to do is solve that problem at first by switching this viewport to an unlit mode. Here across the top of the viewport, I have several different modes that I can choose from, with lit being the default. If I switch this to unlit, suddenly we can see the inside of the room. Now, in this case, this shows us no lighting solution whatsoever. It's just as if we're looking at only the textures in the room. It would be cool if we had some sort of light that we could apply. And let's create that now by putting your mouse on the floor of the room, holding down the L key on your keyboard, and left-clicking with your mouse, and that creates a basic light. Now, if we change back over to view this in a lit state, look at the difference. Ooh, now we've got shading. Very That's right. nice. Things start to get kind of pretty. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is move this light up into the air, and you'll notice that when we created this light, we got this big widget here in the middle of our view that allows us to translate objects. As I move over each one of the uh, arrows in turn, those arrows highlights turn yellow. Move your mouse over the blue Z-axis part of the widget, and you can just drag this straight up into the air. 
Okay, another thing that I'd like to point out is right now it looks like you're missing a wall. But as Zach moves around in this virtual world, it looks like the wall he's currently looking through always vanishes. That's because we cannot see the outside of these walls in this well, with where we've got our camera right now, standing out here in the void. That's right. You can think of these walls as perfect one-way mirrors. So it's not, right. like, it's not like you're missing a wall. You just can't see it from this side. Just wanted to say that in case anybody panicked. <laughs> okay. Now, the next thing is I'm not a big fan of having to work in this tiny little window. So let's make this viewport nice and big so that everybody can see. We can do that by clicking on the Maximize Viewport button located here inside the Viewport toolbar. And boom, there we go. Now everything's nice and big and easy to look at. The first thing we need to do inside this room is apply some sort of materials to the wall. By Translation, the... we need to paint our walls. That's right. By default, we have this gray and, uh, well, I guess gray and light gray. It's not really white uh, texture that is applied to everything. And this is problematic, not only because it doesn't look very good, but because you will get errors if you leave this material on any of the surfaces in your level. So let's go into the generic browser, which is where we go to get all of our materials. You can access this from a few places. Uh, what I'm going to do is click on the open generic browser window button located here in the toolbar. It's a little blue checker box. Let's click on that, and here we get the generic browser. The generic browser is where you'll access all of the assets that you'll place into your level. These are things like materials, static meshes. The list really does go on and on with the things you'll find here, and you can read all about the various things you'll find here inside the resource types list. Now, currently, this list has nothing checked because I have the show all resource types button checked at the top. Make sure that if you're following along, you can see the show resource types checkbox activated. Now, let's go ahead and open up a package where I'm going to find the materials I want to use here. We'll go to File, Open, and under the Environments folder, I'm going to open up ASC Walls and click Open. Give this just a moment to load. Now, these are materials that were pre-constructed for the use of uh, level design in Unreal Tournament 3. So, basically, these materials are being used right now in various levels that have been put together by Epic Games. That's right. Now, we have this big, long list of materials. Our materials are going to appear as thumbnails that have a little sphere to which the material has been applied. We can scroll down this window by using the scroll bar on the right-hand side. You can also click and drag in any of the blank areas of the browser, and that will give you the same effect. Now, there are actually a lot of things listed here. We can see textures, which are in red boxes. If we scroll back up to the top, we can see materials, which are in green. As of Unreal uh, 3, and, Unreal Engine right. 3, you can't apply textures directly to a surface. You must apply a material. So if you're already used to Unreal and you just want to come down here and grab a texture and slap it on a wall, that's a no-no. You can't do it. You must use a material which is going to include those textures. Now, because of that, I wouldn't mind narrowing down our list so that all we see was materials. What I'm going to do is come over here to my resource types list and check material. Notice that unchecks the show all resource types list, and if I scroll down, my textures are now gone, and all I see are just the materials available in this package. Now, I'm going to pick on a particular material. I'm going to use the ASC Walls BSP underscore Wood A03 material. Not a big name at all. No, no, that's, <laughs> that's not a mouthful. And I'm going to try to make the most of my screen space here by dragging the browser just outside of view so that I can uh, just see that color swatch. Now, getting this applied to our walls, the workflow is very important here. Just in case you have accidentally selected on a wall, is that going and select a wall form? Well, if you click on a wall, it's going to turn blue to indicate it has been selected. That's right. Now, let's just say that you've selected a wall and you don't realize it. If you're working over here in the generic browser and you click on one of these materials, it will assign that material to the wall, so keep that in mind. And if you're completely new to Unreal, that can be really frustrating if you didn't know, for example, you had the floor selected and you clicked on some random material because you're going to apply that material to your surface. Also be aware, like, if you had that fourth wall selected that you can't always see <laughs> and you're waiting for something to get applied, you won't see the change, though the next time you wrap around, you'll get to see that that has been applied. Yeah, loads of fun. <laughs> Okay, so I have applied my material now to two walls, but I'm going to show you a shortcut if you wanted to apply a material to all of your walls at once. If I select one of my walls, I can right-click on it, and you'll get this nice pop-up menu that shows you several different options, among which you'll see Select Surfaces. And inside this, you have several different uh, options to allow you to choose different types of selections, and one of the things we see here is Adjacent Walls. So if I click on this, this will give me all of the walls of this particular room, which is very handy. 
Now, with all of them selected, I'm going to click on the uh, ASC Walls BSP Wood A03 material one more time. And now we're applied to all of our surfaces, and that's pretty much what we're looking for. Very nice. However, I wouldn't mind something different for the floor. Yeah, that floor just doesn't really work. <laughs> no, it looks a little funny. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to open up a new package. We'll go to File, Open in the generic browser. Don't do it inside the main Unreal Ed user interface. In your generic browser, go to File, Open. And we'll choose ASC Floors which is right over here, or just floor singular, thank you. Click open and give that just a second to load in. And there we go. Now, once again, all we see in this package are materials, because in my resource types list, material is the only thing we have checked. And I'm going to scroll to the top of this window, and we see ASC Floor BSP Tile 01, and that's what I'm going to be using. So let's go ahead and select the floor. Make sure you don't have the walls selected anymore, or you will regret it. And we'll click <laughs> just because you become frustrated for applying the material to your wall. That's right. We'll click on tile 01, and there we go. So now we have uh, a tile applied. And that looks pretty good. Nice little stone mm -hmm. floor. And if you wanted to, you could uh, select through different uh, tile types and see which one you like the best. Okay, so now let's get something on the ceiling, because, again, we don't want to leave this default texture there. It just looks really out of place. So let's open up yet another package. We'll go to File, Open once more. And we have... Uh, what is ceilings? I think it's in here somewhere. <laughs> ASC roof. There we go. I knew it was in there someplace. All right, so let's see. What looks good here? Or do we not want to use one in this one? I don't think we want to use one in this okay, one. Okay, so let's go to another I was, one. I was really excited, and then I was just like, no, I think these are just for static meshes. So uh, uh, that's, that's the interesting thing about having just thousands of materials right here at your fingertips. That's right. So we're going to go back to the ASC walls package. Okay, sounds and, good. <laughs> and uh, there is a BSP wood A01 material in here that I think we can use. So let's go ahead and just select the ceiling. Oh, and, oh, there there we is. go. Make sure it turns blue, and then we'll click on wood A01. And I think that's yeah, going to that look good. Soon. Okay, so with that, I'm going to close out of the generic browser altogether. And let's get a good look at this room and what's going on. So we can see all four of the walls, the floor and the ceiling, have all been uh, textured. They have mm -hmm. a material applied. Let's go ahead and click on the ceiling again to deselect it. The problem that I have right now is that our walls are tiling in a really funny sort of way. Uh, we can see that we kind of have two copies of the texture, so that we have uh, two different uh, ornamentation bands running across the room. And really, I only want one up near the ceiling. So to, to fix this, to control this, we need to change the tiling of our texture. I'm going to show you how to do that using the Surface Properties window. So go ahead and select any one of your walls, and we're going to press the F5 key. Now you could uh, alternatively go to view, and you'll see surface properties listed there, but I like F5. I'm a big fan of uh, hotkey shortcuts whenever I can use them. And in essence, if you take a look and just really analyze what's going on here, we have exactly twice as much texture visible as we want. We really only want one of these uh, ornamentation bands across the top, and we have exactly two. Aside from that, the uh, texture is fitting rather well. So what I'm going to do is come down to the scaling group here inside my surface properties window. Under simple, we're going to take the drop down and set it down to two, which will increase the scale of this texture by uh, 100%. We'll click apply. And there you go. And there you go. So now everything is fitting really nicely on that wall, so our ornamentation band is up near the top, we got a nice little band down here at the bottom, but the rest of our walls look a little funny. Yes, they do. So let's select this wall, and let's talk about making multiple selections. I'm going to hold down the control key and left click, I'm sorry, it is left click. No, it click. is. I know my left <laughs> and my right, I really do. So control, left click on uh, this wall, then still holding control, click on this wall as well, and we'll click apply one more time, and there we go. Very nice. Now, if you uh, want, you can do this to any of these surfaces in your room. For example, if we wanted to make the floor tile maybe a little bigger, you could do that. That might be too bad. I don't know. I kind of like it with the, the big stones there on the floor. I think, okay. we'll, I think we'll leave it. And uh, with that, I think we're done with surface properties. I'm not too worried about the ceiling. We're going to be covering some of that up with static mesh beams a little bit later anyways. So let's close surface properties, and we have our basic room. All right, so now, what do you want to do? Put some more geometry in? Well, one room is nice, but it's kind of boring. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It'd be nice if there was a second room. So what I'm going to do is shift over to a top view, where I'm looking down on the world from a bird's eye view, which I can do by either minimizing my, vi uh, my viewport by clicking on the Maximize Viewport button one more time, and I have a top viewport located up here in the top left corner. Now let's talk just a second about navigating this view, because it's a little different than navigating our 3D view. If you left drag around uh, the screen, you're panning your camera. So it's like you're strafing, but really you're looking at a two-dimensional view here, so that's really all you can do. If you hold down the left and right mouse buttons, you're zooming in and out. 
So in between the two, you should be able to get wherever it is you want to go. Now, that's one way to get to a top view. Another way, which is kind of useful, is if you don't want to shrink your viewport down, you can jump right over to one by clicking on the top button here inside your viewport toolbar. So notice you have P, T, F, and S. So that's perspective, top, front, and side. If I click on top, ooh, everything goes dark. That's because we're still trying to view this in a lit mode. If we shift it over to brush wireframe, we get the exact same type of viewport we had a second ago. Now, I like working this way because uh, sometimes when I'm limited on screen space, I like having one big viewport. So as we proceed through these next couple of videos, you'll probably see me switching back and forth a lot between top and side and perspective and just changing out my modes for uh, what particular mode I'm in. Or what particular view I'm in, yeah. excuse me. Okay, so now we have our room in place. The first thing I need to do is get the red builder brush out of the way. We could, of course, take the red builder brush, move it over here to the side someplace, and create another subtraction. Mm -hmm. However, if we did that, we'd have to go through the, uh, the motions of retexturing this new room that we created. So what I'm going to do is get the red builder brush completely out of the way. I'm going to click on the walls of this room to select the brush that is defining it. We actually created a piece of geometry called a subtractive brush when we clicked the subtraction button earlier, and we have a light within that too. So uh, we'll make a marquee selection to grab everybody. So you can hold down Control and Alt and just left-click drag across both of these objects, and notice now we have the room and we have the light selected. Now what I want to do is create a duplicate. There's a couple of ways to do this. We can go under edit and we can choose duplicate or my favorite method is to hold down alt and just move something so I'm holding down the alt key we'll move the mouse over this green arrow and then left click drag off to the right and notice we immediately get a second copy all right so I'm gonna move this over and I haven't let go of the mouse button yet so if you've let go of the mouse button you might want to delete what you just created and drag along with me I want you to cut your eyes down to the bottom of your viewport and you'll notice there's a little tiny field right about the middle center of your viewport that tells you how far you're moving your object if I move it right back to where we started it says no, no change says no change and I start to truck it over to the right we start getting a numerical value if you want to follow along with me exactly you want to move this room and this brush over 640 units like so so I let go of the mouse at 640 and there we go now go ahead and take your mouse down to the area and just kind of highlight it down there at the bottom. Yeah, this is the area that was updating just a second ago. That's right. By default, this is only going to give you the coordinates of your mouse if you're not moving anything. In fact, just to really you know drive it home, make sure everybody got to see, I'll go ahead and delete that room really quickly. We'll do a Control-Alt-Drag. So watch up. down at the bottom. Once again, it's going to change over to position when he begins moving. So it's position, and you can see that center number, Y, updating as he is moving this. There we go. All right, so now I have two rooms. Or do I? <laughs> Let's go back over to the perspective viewport, and I'll switch on uh, lit mode once again. So here's the room that we started out in. I'm going to move our uh, mouse out of here. And look at this. Mm. We have one room which is actually working for us and looking pretty good, and another room which is just an empty wireframe. This has to do with the building of geometry. And internally, we have duplicated this room. We've also duplicated the light, but Unreal hasn't taken the time to create the geometry of these walls. Right now, the framework is in place, but there's still one part left to do, which is uh, actually create the surfaces that we've defined. So what I'm going to do really quick is click on the Build Geometry for Current Level button located up here in the toolbar. This will take just a second. We'll get some warnings, but don't worry about these just yet. They're not really important. First, it says that paths need to be rebuilt, but we haven't created any bot pathing at this point, so that's irrelevant. And then it says lighting needs to be rebuilt, but we're not really working with lights right now anyways. So we can just close this window altogether, and suddenly we have two rooms. Now, that's all well and good, and definitely nice to have two rooms available to us, but... We don't really have a way to get from one room to the next. And that seems to me that it would be kind of important. That's problematic anyway. So uh, let's create a hallway that will join the two rooms together. What I'm going to do is go back over to my cube builder button that we had over here inside the toolbox, and we'll right-click on this one more time. And in the X direction, I'm going to set this to uh, 256. In Y, we're going to set this to 128. And in Z, we're going to set this to 192. Let's go ahead and build. Now, 
you need to find your red builder brush. So if you moved it way out of the way, you're going to notice that it's kind of floating out here. I'm going to jump into my top view to help me uh, position Line this. All this up. Yep. And then we'll set this back over to wire frame view so we can see everything. Now, here's my red builder brush. We need to move this right in between our two walls. Now, it's possible if uh, you got your numbers out of order when you were following along that you have a brush that's oriented in a different way. And just to really show you how that might work, if you accidentally switch 256 and 128, like we said, maybe 128 in X and 256 in Y, when we build, our hallway is actually pointing in the wrong direction. It's not going to fit exactly between these two surfaces like we want it to. If that's the case, you can either, of course, rebuild in the different dimensions, or as an alternative, you could rotate this brush around. If you tap the space bar, you'll notice your widget is going to change shape. And it really has three forms that you can cycle through. It has the translation widget for moving things, it has the rotation widget for rotating, and it has the scale widget for changing the size of objects. We're going to tap it over until we get the rotation widget, and then put your mouse over the blue ring, which will rotate our object in the z-axis, and we'll just drag this off to the right until we are rotated uh, vertically, the way that we want this brush to be oriented. Let's go ahead and tap the space bar two more times to get back to translate mode. And what I want you to do is make sure that your brush fits exactly between these two brushes. Now, this uh, requires that we take just a moment and talk for a moment about snapping. You'll notice that I'm, as I move my brush around, I'm jumping between major grid points. If for some reason you are not snapping to grid points the way you should be, you need to go up under your view menu and make sure that under drag grid, one, you are using the drag grid. Whenever you're working with brushes like we are, you should always have your drag grid active. Always use it. And in, uh, in my case, I'm snapping to every 16 units. If you have a different value, you might want to set to 16. Now, just as an example, if I set this to four units for a moment, and we'll just offset our brush slightly so that uh, the next time when I go back to 16, Go back into the view menu, make sure we're back at 16. You'll notice I really can't get these brushes to line up exactly. It just won't snap to save my life. You can fix that by right-clicking on any one corner of the brush. It's going to move your translation widget to that corner, but it's also going to snap the whole brush back to the grid. So if you're having a hard time getting brushes to align to the grid, you can just right-click on a corner and it'll take care of it for you. Okay, now with your snapping set to 16, make sure that your brushes are all nicely snapped perfectly wall to wall. And you might want to zoom really close in and make sure that they are right on top of each other. You don't want any gaps and you don't want any overlapping. That's critical. If, in fact, if you have a gap, you won't actually get a hallway. You'll, That's right. You'll still have a wall there. Okay, before we show how cool this actually is, let's get out of top view mode. We'll go back to perspective. We'll switch back over to lit mode and we'll take a look at what we're about to chop out. Now, if you take a look at this, our uh, brush doesn't go all the way down to the floor. Yeah, we're up in the air, so there's going to be a bit of a step up into this hallway. That's right, and for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. Let's come over to our subtract button, and we'll click it one more time, and boom. A couple of interesting things happened. First off, we did get a nice little hole cut in between our two rooms, exactly like, uh, like I was hoping we would. But take a look at these surfaces. They have a material already applied. They don't have that uh, default gray te checker texture. Yeah, Zach, it looks like it's the last material that you had used or had selected in your generic browser. That's exactly right. The last material that you have selected will be applied to any new brushes you create. Now, I don't really want this uh, hallway to have to have a step up, so let's fix this now. What I'm going to do is go back into an orthographic view, and this time I think I'm going to pick on the front view, and we'll switch back over to brush wire frame mode, and we can see our two rooms, and we can see the red builder brush in between them. However, if I move the builder brush, nothing is going to change because that hallway has been defined by a subtractive brush that I just created. So what I need to do is select this subtractive brush and I can pull it down just a couple of grid spaces until it's even with the floor. Now a very important thing to point out, let's go and switch back over to our perspective view and then back into a lit state and take a look at this. We still don't see an update of our geometry. Even though we've taken the subtractive builder brush and we've moved it down flush with the floor, we don't see the geometry updating properly. But just a second ago, you saw when we carved out the hallway, we instantly saw the, the geometry update properly. Well, that is because when we use subtract or add brushes in, everything does update. It's, right. it's like a quick rebuild on that geometry right there. But when you go in there and physically manipulate your subtractive or 
for additive brushes, as we are doing here, you're going to need to rebuild that geometry to see the update take place. That's right. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just click on Build Geometry for Current Level. Give it just a moment. We'll close out of our little warning. Notice this. We get a new warning here that says, Run Clean BSP Materials to, to Clear Two Unnecessary Material References. Now, what on earth does that mean? Well, we created this hallway the same way we created these rooms. We've created a subtractive brush which defines this negative space, this carving out of mass. There are two walls here that we actually don't see that are being calculated. That's a bit of a problem, and Unreal can fix that for us if we go under Tools and choose Clean BSP Materials. And notice it says Clean Two BSP Material References. Check Log Window for further details. That's okay. We'll just take its word for it. All right, the last thing we really need to do is clean up the materials on this hallway. It looks a little out of place to have the roof material on all four of the visible surfaces. It does. <laughs> and we'll go ahead and leave it there for the, for the ceiling part. That looks fine. But we need to apply the uh, wall texture and the floor texture to their respective panels. There's a shortcut to do this. It'll make our, uh, our lives a lot easier if we don't want to have to dig these out of the generic browser again. I'm going to select any one of the uh, walls that have this uh, wall material applied. We're going to hold down Alt and right-click on the surface. Then if I come over to our hallway, I can hold down Alt and left click on the surface and the material that I uh, right clicked on will get applied. So let's move over here. I'll Alt and left click on this wall and there we go. Now if I Alt click on the floor, we also apply it to the floor so we don't want to do that. So I'm going to select the floor, I'm going to Alt right click, then Alt left click here on the floor and there we go. Very nice. But we have a, still have one little bit of a problem in that the tiling is now off. Uh, this surface is tiling a little bit heavier than the rest of the floor, as are the walls. So what I'm going to do is select the floor, hold down Control, select the two walls. Now I'll press F5 again to open up my surface properties window. And notice it has kept my setting from the last time I used the window where simple scaling is set to 2. Just click Apply and then close the window. And you'll notice that has solved the problem. Because Much now, better. Now everybody's tiling to the same size. And with that, we are essentially done. There's only one last thing remaining, and it's a really nitpicky thing, and that's that we can see the seam between these surfaces. Mm -hmm. There is a way to fix that. Let's go ahead and select our floor. And I'll right-click on the floor, go to Select Surfaces, and we'll choose All Adjacent Floors, which is really handy. Just grabs everybody at once. Now, let's uh, jump back into our Surface Properties window. And down here under Alignment, we can choose Planar, which is going to automatically align all of the textures on the surface to a single plane. Click Apply. And now that seam is gone, but our scaling is a bit off. So if we look really close, you can no longer see any seam here on the floor. So if we want that scaling back, just make sure with a simple set to two, we go ahead and reapply. Look at that. Very nice. And with that, we can close the surface properties window, and all of our materials are, are applied, and this stage of our level creation is done. So we'll go ahead and end this video at this point, and then in the next video, we'll talk about how we can start decorating this level and start making it look a little less bland by adding static meshes.